so I'm back at Copeland again. I'm talking to Nancy, and Nancy's got something that does not look like a compressor at all. No, right? it doesn't matter. Uh, so, so we just talked to, uh, we talked about an E2. We talked about a controller. Yep. Now we're talking about dehumidification mm -hmm. in Copeland. Yep. All right. Now, I've been around dehumidification for a long time, Nancy. Yep. This does not look like what I know. Nope. What do we got going on here? Well, this does not look like a wheel. It, it's not a it wheel. It's not the right shape. All right, this so is... desiccant wheels uh, on the grocery world. Yep. We, we like to have great big air handlers with yep. a desiccant wheel in there. Yep. Maybe even fire to, to help reactivate that. Right. Or we're using waste heat from, con, uh, yep. from our condenser, from our air conditioner circuit, yep. right? Reactivating that desiccant wheel. Yep. It's all about the wheel. That's right. So desiccant's desiccant, still a great thing. It does a great job but it doesn't always have to be in the solid form. So okay. it's in a liquid form. We got liquid desiccant going on when here. When it's in a liquid form, you can do different things with it. You're not stuck with just sticking it to a wheel. So when you flow this into a module of this size, it's gonna do the same work as desiccants do in the solid form. It's gonna grab on a water vapor, it's gonna grab on a moisture and carry it away. So the bonus is still there with the desiccant, but you don't have to rely on that moving wheel. This does oh, not have any moving parts. We don't have a rotation. We don't have a belt. No we don't chain. have a chain. No. Nope, we don't no have rollers trying to hold this together. No. It sits in its spot. Okay. Where you put it. Yep. And does its work. It just okay. happily does its work. Now, so, the biggest problem I have with Descant, other than maintaining its drive system, yep. Um, it gets dirty. Yep. And the desiccant disintegrates, and I end up having yep. to change the wheel because it's it's just failed. It got too hot, it got too old, it worked too hard, yep. I don't know. But it starts falling apart. Yep. And then that goes into my airstream that I'm blowing into my store, or I've got smoke news, on the roof, right? Bad, bad news. news. <laughs> so so what does this do instead? Yeah, right? well, the reason why that happens <laughs> yeah. is because the solid desiccant must come into contact with that airstream in sure. order to be effective. Yep. This system uses a highly engineered membrane that provides a barrier from that de liquid desiccant to the airstream. So nary the two actually touch. All right, so I think maybe that's kind of important too. Yeah. Anyone who's worked with liquid desiccants before, yeah. primarily when we've seen it applied, it's we just kind of spray it. And the yep. air and that desiccant mix together, and so does the yep. dirt if it's not filtered that's very well. Correct. Uh, and our, our specific gravity kind of moves around depending on how much yep. uh, water is coming out of the air, yep. right? And how much evaporates and how yep. much leaves the machine maybe and corrodes and rust things, All those things, right? That's kind of what we're used to. Right. So this is not an open spray system. Not, not an open spray system this at all. This is a closed loop. Okay. So the membrane is two things. It's a barrier and it's a breathable wall. Okay. Right? So it's a barrier to getting any of that desiccant anywhere in the airstream specifically, but it breathes. So that membrane is very selective. It can only pull water vapor through. So water vapor can pass through the barrier, but the barrier is going to prevent our desiccant from, from getting being... into the airstream. Okay. That's correct. Okay. And it's a closed loop system. All right. So that means no contamination from the outside air and right. things that would dilute it or you know make it uh, contaminated of any way. And it also is controllable that way. So you know what temperature it is, you know what concentration it is. Oh, so you can control how well it's doing because it's a closed loop. It's not open to the planet. It is closed and controlled. And so that is why this is different than say a solid desiccant wheel or any other desiccant application that is open to to the air. So how long will this last? We my, have, my wheel, maybe 10 years yeah, up north where it doesn't get a lot of abuse. You know, how we how do we compare there? 15 is what we're 15. doing reliability testing towards a 15 year life, yes. Okay, wow. All and right. no maintenance. There's nothing you can do here. There's nothing moving in here. There's no fans in there. There's, there's no fans. no belts, there's no pulleys, no it's drive systems, not, nothing. nothing. So How, do, I, do I have to clean it? You is do it not have no. to clean it. The membrane is highly hydrophobic. It resists anything but water vapor. Okay. And it has been put through paces upon paces. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to try to understand, you know, what would we have to do to really contaminate it? 
Um, just for an example, we tested it with about 100,000 times the worst day of particulate matter on the planet. Wow. And it's still no problem. Through. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, so, so let's let's try to picture my my giant air handler with my wheel in there. Yep. I uh, I'm I'm not going to retrofit something, but if I was redesigning right. that, right? Yep. Uh, and I take my wheel out. Yep. Right. I'm going to put this there instead. What does that look like? Yeah, it's going to take a little more engineering okay. than that. Okay. So right. it's not necessarily a, just a bolt-on solution. Right. You're going to have to figure out where to put the piping for the desiccants and where to put some tanks okay. for that. So, so so piping for my desiccant. What am I yep. piping? Piping. You have to pipe concentrated desiccants. Okay. As well as after it's diluted over to a regenerator. So regeneration still has to happen. So this is this is half of my system right, right. here. Yes. I've got another half, yep. right? So this is, if we think of my wheel, yep. this is my process side yep. where that outside air, or that return yep. air is coming through here and then, then going yep. out dry, yep. right? Well, now I've got, just like my wheel, my desk is now full of water. Yep. Gotta and I got to reject out. that water. That's correct. Right? So on my wheel, that's the hot side. You know, that's yep. my reactivation. Uh, yep. So I'm going to do that with these with this piping. I'm going to have another one of these yep. guys where I'm reactivating. Correct. Is that right? Okay. That's absolutely correct. Okay. And you can use some of your building air to help that process. Okay. Or not. You can use outside air. So so to fits. reactivate with my with my solid wheel, I need heat. A yep. lot of it, right? Yep. What am I using to reactivate this guy? So inside here is also a water circuit. Okay. So the water circuit is about 60 degrees on the cold side. It's about 140 on the hot side. All right. So I'm, I'm going to pipe glycol, right? Yep. Uh, I'm going to pipe, pipe water with some antifreeze in it. Yep. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to supply 60 degrees to the cold side. Yep. And what was that, 140? Yep. Roughly 140 on... Between 120 and 140, okay. depending on how much outdoor air you're and using to boost it. I can generate that any way I want, right? right. I can have a compressor that's running a, a yep. plate heat exchanger, for instance, you know, however I want to do that. However you want if to I've do got that. glycol in the system already in my building, maybe yep. I bring that. Yep. If I'm running secondary refrigerant, yep. for instance, might yep. be a really good place to do that. Might be capturing the waste heat it from my condensing, yep. um, from my rack or my air conditioning or, you know, any one of those applications. Whatever fits your system best. So I'm yep. going to want to use waste heat most likely. I don't want to generate it if right. I don't have to. Correct. So now I've got free regeneration kind of, right? Um, okay. Wow. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's very flexible. And as you can see, that's made to be modular. Right. So okay. So I can stack these guys up. You can up. stack them. You can make them this way. You can make them that way. Whatever fits best. Very so that's cool. The, you know, that's the, the bulk of it. You know what you need to do in your building, and this will enable you to get the most out of that latent portion so that you don't have to rely on the balance of your system to make all that happen. So consequently, you know, from a, just comparison, you're going to save energy, but the whole building's yeah. going to benefit because now the rest of the building can just focus on the sensible side. So where you might have had to oversize in right. order to get that latent piece, yeah. now you can really right size. So that's another, on top of that energy savings comparatively, you get another energy savings by letting the rest of the building do what it's designed to do. Very cool. Yeah. All right, We're Nancy, I, I think we've kind of got the general idea. <laughs> yeah. Really excited to see this. Really hope to see this in a piece of equipment running yeah. at, a, at a store that I walk up to. Uh, open the door. I'm, I'm sure you'd very much like for that to be Copeland <laughs> Compressors driving, uh, you we know, all this. That, yeah. uh, very interesting. <laughs> Cope, not really expected that, to be honest, to see Copeland getting into dehumidification uh, yep. liquid desiccant. Yeah. Uh, very cool. Sustainability well, thank you very is a big focus. Thank you very much for your time. All right. Nancy. Thanks, Matthew. Take care. Have a good day. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, HVACRschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex by Tex.